Hi, I'm the University of Colorado's Dr. Jackson Crawford. I'm an Old Norse specialist back today with another video about a topic in Norse language and myth. One thing that I'm frequently asked about is why Norse and Viking names are spelled so many different ways and what the right way is. Well, part of the reason for so much variation is that there's variation in Old Norse itself. Medieval writers didn't have a Merriam-Webster's they could turn to to give them the correct spelling for words, and so they tended to spell them however their local region pronounced them in whatever decade they happened to be writing in. So even though there's a certain consistency because words don't change overnight in radical ways, there's still small elements of inconsistency already there in the Old Norse manuscripts. For instance, there's the vowel that results from a mutation of a vowel ah by a vowel u. We usually call this u umlaut or u mutation. This results in a vowel something like a rounded ah sound, a little bit like the northern New Jersey pronunciation of the o in coffee. So an oh, like if you say ah at the dentist's office but with your lips rounded, oh. Old Norse writers never quite made up their mind about how to write this, and so we see it in a lot of different ways. We see O with a tail, it's called O caudata. We see A and U written together as one letter. A and V written together as one letter because U and V are consistently distinguished in, in medieval writing. We see A and O written together as one letter, sometimes O with a tail above it, sometimes O with some kind of dot on it. We see a lot of variation. In standard Old Norse textbooks and editions today, most writers use O caudata for that vowel. But you'll also see people who use other kinds, uh, including the modern Icelandic uh, descendant of this vowel, which is written as O with two dots above it, but which is pronounced in the front of the mouth as U. So that's part of the origin of it. Another problem with variation is that there are letters used in writing Old Norse in the Roman alphabet that aren't used in writing English or most other languages today, with the occasional exception of Icelandic. These letters include two letters for writing the TH sound, uh, one of which is called thorn. It looks something like a P and is often mistaken for a P that writes the TH sound in words like thin, breath, and worth. There's also the letter E that looks something like an O with a cross above it that writes the TH sound in breathe or worthy or then. Different writers are, and translators disagree about how to render these in a language like English. Often in English we render thorn as a TH, so for instance the name of the god Thor, which is Thorn, long O, R, R in Old Norse gets rendered as T-H-O-R in English, but Eth gets inconsistently rendered. Sometimes you'll see it as a D. For instance, most people write Odin, the name of the god who is the father of Thor, as O-D-I-N today, even though his name in Old Norse is long O, Eth, I-N-N. Uh, and then sometimes you'll see it written as a T-H. So sometimes you'll actually see Othin. Uh, sometimes you'll see the name of the hero Sigurdur written as Sigurd, sometimes you'll see it as Sigurd, as I wrote it in my translation of the Poetic Edda, or as I write it in my translation of the Saga of the Volsungs coming out in September, Sigurd with the E turned into not a curly medieval D, but a straight-backed modern D with a slash through it to remind people that this is a consonant and not an O, and that it is, uh, the, the letter itself is related to the letter D. There's also this final R that appears on most masculine names and many feminine names in Old Norse. So for instance, Sigurdur, but also the Valkyrie Brynhildr, uh, or the god Hoder. This R is a grammatical ending. It's not part of the core of the name. So just like in English, you add an S to the end of a name to make it possessive. So you say, uh, Jackson, but Jackson's book, uh, Arnold, but Arnold's house, that kind of thing. That S is added to show possession, and an R is added to most names in Old Norse to show subject. So Sigurdr is the form of the word that you would use if he's a subject of the sentence. Sigurdr slow mik, Sigurdr hit me. But ex slow Sigurd, that R is gone because he's not the subject anymore. Since it's not part of the core of the word, most translators remove that R. And that R can sometimes appear as just a second R, like in the name Thor, or in the name Ragnar, which is then removed if it's the object of the sentence Thor with one R, Ragnar with one R. It also sometimes appears as a second N or a second L if the name ends in N or L, such as the god Odin, subject form, Odin with one N, object form, or Hrappenkel, subject form, Hrappenkel, one L, object form. So disagreements about whether to include that R or second R or second N, second L, that also results in a certain amount of variation. One exception to the removal of the R is the name Baldr, in that case, Baldr, the R, is actually part of the core of his name. It's not just a, a grammatical ending. So you can see from this part of why these names are spelled so inconsistently. 
Uh, and it means that a name like Hother, the blind god who accidentally kills his brother Baldr, we can see this name in a variety of different ways. We can see Hother, Hother, Huther, Hod, Huth, Hoth, etc. We can see the Eth as a D, the Eth as a TH, the Eth as a as an eh, the eh is a straight up D with a slash. We can see the vowel is a regular O, as an O with two dots, and as an O with a slash if it's maybe a Norwegian or a Danish writer. We can see the R there or the R gone. There's so many different combinations that it can get a little bit confusing. In my translation of the poetic Edda, I used the, the nearest that I could render these Old Norse names using only the 26 letters of English. Uh, in my translation of the Saga of the Volsungs, responding to more interest in seeing these names in their Old Norse forms, I have less anglicized them. So although Thorn is turned into a TH, Eth is rendered as a D with a slash, uh, and R is removed from the end of names, otherwise they're left basically uh, as they're spelled in Old Norse. Well, from the wilderness of the American West, I'm hoping this has been somewhat useful in clearing up confusion about this issue. And I'm wishing you all the best.